What's up y'all, NX is at it again with a brand new NX 16.8 release. There's so many features with this new release, we're gonna try to do our best to get them all in. So go ahead and start running your NX migrate commands and I'll fill you in on everything you need to know about the new release. Let's go. All right, so the first big change we have to talk about is changes to NX generators. NX generators are powerful code generation scripts that are going to generate your projects with all the tools that you need already set up and working for you right out of the box. And with our latest NX 16.8 release, we've changed the way that these generators work in terms of how you set a project's name versus how you set its location inside of your file system. This is all done to give you more control and customization options over how you structure your workspace. However, it's creating a difference in how some of our long-term users might expect some of these generators to work. So here's what you need to know about this new change. Inside of your nx.json file, there's a category there for workspace layout. And the newest release introduces a new option here called project name and root format. You can set this one of two different ways, either as provided or derived. If you set this option to derived, most of our generators will behave as they used to. However, if you use as provided, which will be the default going forward, we're going to use the name you provide as both the name of your project in your project.json and as the path to get to your project from the root of your workspace. This means by default, all of your projects will be created as a directory at the root of your workspace, as opposed to nested inside of your apps or your libs directory. To revert this to the previous behavior, you can revert the setting back to derived, or you can provide a dash dash directory option inside of your command. Also, if you don't provide an option here explicitly, we will prompt you as part of the generator which style to use in terms of where you want your project to go. As we mentioned, we think this will give you more options in terms of how you want to structure your mono repo, which is important for our plans for NX going forward. Be sure to let us know what you think about this change going forward. As always, you can like and subscribe to this video and add comments and we'll check them out. But another great way to get plugged into the team is to join our Discord server that we just launched. It's been really cool to see how fast the Discord has been growing, and I really look forward to using our Discord server as a really helpful tool for us to get more connected with our community as the months and years go forward. On a similar note, NX is coming up on 20,000 stars on GitHub. As you can see, we've had a very steady influx of GitHub stars over the years, and we're closing in on that 20,000 mark. If NX has been helpful to you and you haven't started the repo yet, please consider giving us a star to help us close in on this 20,000 goal. Thanks so much for that. Now let's get back to more features of this new release. So up next, we have better TypeScript performance. And this comes from two major features that we landed as part of this newest release. The first one of these you probably don't need to know about and you probably won't notice it aside from your monorepo just becoming faster. And that is that we are now using Rust as a way of determining your TypeScript dependencies. This way, NX's ability to determine your project graph just gets a little bit faster because we're using Rust instead of TypeScript to determine these dependencies. The other major feature we landed as part of this release is TypeScript batch mode. Now this feature is still experimental. However, you can opt into it today using the NX batch mode environment variable whenever you are running a command with the NX. Here you can see via our benchmark for large TypeScript mono repos, we've seen this increase build times by a factor of five times, which is huge. The magic behind this is normally every project would be built using its own process. This means that every build is essentially starting from scratch in terms of TypeScript getting all the resources it needs in order to correctly build or transpile your TypeScript code into JavaScript. However, using batch mode, we're using one process to reuse all of the resources that TypeScript has already gathered when building subsequent projects. This actually cuts down on the time significantly, which results in the significant speed improvements that we see. Up next might be my favorite for this release, which is a completely new plugin to support Playwright. Playwright is an end-to-end -end testing framework that NX now fully supports alongside Cypress. This means that whenever you're creating a new front-end application, you will have the option to choose between either Cypress or Playwright when setting up an end-to-end -end test suite for that project. If you have existing front-end projects that you'd like to create a Playwright test suite for, you can install the Playwright plugin directly and then run the Playwright configuration generator for your targeted app. This is going to create a new end-to-end -end task for that application with Playwright all set up and running right out of the box. Up next is a new integration with the Netlify platform. We've been working closely with Netlify in terms of improving their mono repo support, and Yuri sat down with Netlify's own Lucas Holzer to discuss Netlify's new support and how you can leverage this inside of your NX and Lerna mono repos. You can check out the full conversation right here on our YouTube channel, or you can go to Netlify's blog to find out more information. Next up is some really cool new features to NX console. Now, if you're not familiar with NX console, NX console is the IDE integration that we have for NX to support both VS Code and your JetBrain products like IntelliJ and WebStorm. 
This way, NX can integrate with your code right where you're writing it. And among other things, it supports the NX project graph and the NX task graph. Previously, these graphs were simply visualizations to help you understand how your monorepo was set up. However, with this release, we're adding new features which will let you interact with that graph. For the project graph, we've added a button that will take you directly to that project inside of your file system when clicked on. Inside of the task graph, we've added a play button here, which when you click it, is going to run the task in question. These features actually came out of feedback from the NX community, which highlighted these interactions as the obvious piece that was missing when working with these graphs. So thanks y'all and be sure to keep those recommendations coming. Next up is new support for Storybook 7. Among other things, one of the things that Storybook 7 released was interaction testing, which is a way of taking your storybook stories and scripting through some automated steps and making some assertions via the DOM that things behaved as they expected. We've added support for this via the interaction test option of the storybook configuration generator, which means you'll have the interaction testing set up for you out of the box whenever you generate stories for your components via the NX generators. Next up is another feature that came to us via the NX community, which is a generator to convert your NX standalone apps into NX mono repos. When we first introduced standalone apps at the start of this year, we noticed that it was widely accepted by the community as a great way of having all of the NX features inside of just a single application as opposed to forcing you into a mono repo. However, we've had many requests from the community for a way to convert your standalone applications into an NX mono repo, which totally makes sense in the case where you started out as a single application, but eventually that application grew to the point where you actually have multiple applications and now you want to go to a mono repo setup. And this is exactly where our convert to mono repo generator steps in. Using this generator, you can take an NX standalone application and turn it to a mono repo by hoisting the application up into a new apps directory and taking all of the other projects that you created inside of your standalone application and putting them into the libs directory, recreating the typical NX mono repo you might expect when starting with the mono repo. So it's here now. Go ahead and give it a shot. Let us know what you think. Next up, we're headed to our docs where we've redesigned the intro page to refocus on learning what NX is all about. This includes links to videos and tutorials all focused on learning what NX is all about. Also on our docs page, we've revamped the NX plugin registry. One of the best things about NX is how extensible it is. And the community has definitely stepped up to create a whole set of extensions on top of the core that the NX team has created. However, in the past, we haven't had a good signal as to what the quality of a certain plugin is via our registry. So now we support a whole new set of supplementary data, including the last time an extension was published, how many downloads it has, how many stars it has, and what versions of NX it's compatible with. These all come together to provide some much more solid signals as to how good an extension is before you actually go and install it. It's live now, so go give it a shot. Next up, we have another brand new generator for ESLint. ESLint is announcing a new config system nicknamed FlatConfig. It's a way of taking the configuration for ESLint that you're used to, but simplifying it down so it's not as complicated as what it's grown into over the years. Now, if you don't want to mess with it converting that yourself manually, I've got great news for you because this generator is all about taking your legacy ESLint config and fast forwarding you straight into the new FlatConfig. You can go give it a try now. However, the FlatConfig is still considered experimental. So use this as an opportunity to preview these changes to make sure it'll still work for your workspace and you can be a step ahead for when ESLit ultimately converts to this new flat config in the future. Next up we've got a new video all about NX Cloud. NX Cloud is our premium service that we offer to large organizations that features integrations with GitHub, a shared distributed cache, and distributed task execution. My good friend Raj put together this great video about it and Raj has been instrumental to NX Cloud's success since NX Cloud's launch. So be sure to check out the video and be sure to check out out nx.app once you're ready to try it out. Last but not least, nxconf is coming up. We'll be coming to you live from New York City on September 26th. Check out nx.dev conf for more details and be sure to click the link to register for your spot to watch free remotely. So that's everything folks. If you have any more questions, be sure to check out our NX Live that we're coming out with this week. This will give you a chance to talk with the members of the NX team and the engineers that built all the features we talked about today. So be sure to come by and bring you all of your best questions. We look forward to seeing you there. I won't be on this one myself, but you can be sure I'll be in the chat. Until next time, keep working hard, y'all. We're working hard right alongside y'all. We love to see everything that you're making and everything you're doing with the tools that we're giving y'all. And y'all are really fulfilling the vision for what we had set out for NX, which is offloading all of the chores and the menial tasks to NX so you as a developer can focus on what you should be focused on, which is developing awesome features for your users. We love to see it. Thanks, y'all, and we'll see you next time. Peace.